This is Software 10 IP Reporting. Now looking at the IP Reporting tab. To activate the PCOM port for IP reporting, the PCOM port is UL listed for IP reporting, you need to click on Add IP Reporting. There are three options at the top. We're going to talk about these and then get into the reporting accounts. Starting with Reporting Method Priority. Your options are primary and secondary. The default is primary. These panels have the capability of reporting via the IP, which was what we're looking at right now, as well as the UD1000, which is the dialer. If you would like the IP reporting to back up the dialer, you would set this to secondary. If the reverse is true, you want the IP reporting to be primary, you can set the dialer up to be secondary. The same reporting method priority option is in the dialer tab. You can also set up both of them to be primary, which means that when the signal comes into the fire alarm control panel, it will send the information via the UD1000 and the dialer, as well as the IP reporting PCOM port. Again, the default here is primary. The next thing we have is reporting path, and the default is built-in IP dialer. If I hit the drop-down here, my other option is the FCB1000. This is the fire communication bridge. It is the remote Ethernet connection that you can mount in a 19-inch rack mount near the router. If I pick this, that means that when I'm sending my signals to Central Station, they will be going out of the FCB1000 port instead of the PCOM port. Again, the default is built-in IP dialer. For more information on the FCB1000, please refer to the recorded module on the FCB1000. Moving now to IP reporting accounts. Click on Add Account button to add a reporting account. You can add up to 64 IP reporting accounts. For each account, there are characteristics that need to be set. So the first thing you need to decide is what type of signals are going to be sent. So if we're going to have this first line go to Central Station, we're going to select Alarms, Troubles, and Supervisories. My next option is to decide how much information to send. The default is point, which means it gets all the specific information of the event of that particular point. I can select zone, which means it gets the information of the event per zone. So there's an alarm in this zone number, there's a supervisory in this zone number, etc. Panel is just going to give me there's an alarm on this panel. That's all the information I'm going to get. Again, the default is point. To expand primary account settings, you click on the arrow and it then expands the settings. The first column is primary account ID number. This is something that Central Station will give you. This is your account number. So you'll enter in an account number, whatever it is they give you here. The next option that you'll get is primary DNIS. If your Central Station gives you a DNIS number, you're going to enter that here. If they do not, don't worry about it, just leave it blank. I'm going to say that they did give me a DNIS number, so I'm going to go ahead and enter this here. Now I'm going to say they only gave me a four-digit number. This needs to be six digits, so I'm going to autofill those two zeros. Now when you are using DNIS, it needs to go contact ID. Your two reporting formats are SIA or contact ID for IP reporting. My next option is report uh, test events, so go ahead and check that if you want that to happen. The next column is primary receiver IP. So the, instead of giving you a phone number, Central Station is going to give you an IP address. So you go ahead and enter your, the IP address that they gave you into this column. Primary protocol, in this case, we're just going to leave that as Fibro. This panel is UL listed with a SureGuard System 3 IP receiver, and this is the language that we speak with that, which is called Fibro. All right, so now the next column is a UDP port. This is a UDP port given to you by Central Station. They also have a router on their side, which allows them access to the Internet, and we need to go through that router into their receiver. So they're going to give you a UDP port. Whatever the number that is, you're going to enter that here. The supervision interval is next. That is defaulted to 90 seconds. What that means is the panel is going to send a supervision ping to the receiver at Central Station every 90 seconds. This supervision interval is programmable depending on which version of the code you are following. If they give you an encryption key, Central Station gives you an encryption key, you're going to enter that here, and the only encryption method we have is 128-bit. So that's what you would do there if they give you that information. So that is for the primary IP receiver. Now I'm going to shrink that up by clicking on the arrow again, and I have my backup, which is my secondary receiver or account. The account number is probably going to be the same. If they gave you a DNIS number, they probably are going to give it to you again. So then you change this to contact ID. They're going to give you a different IP address because this is going to a 
secondary receiver backing up the primary. It will still be fibro. They will probably give you the same UDP port, but you do need to enter that in here. Uh, the supervisional interval is set to 90, and then again, you can encrypt this information if you want to. So that is setting up one account. Now you can go down to the next line and send that information to another IP receiver. We can send this information to up to 64 different IP reporting accounts. What happens is when there's an event on the panel, it goes to the first line, and if it's a, say for example, an alarm event, it says, okay, I need to send this information, so it goes to the primary account settings and sends the information to this IP receiver. It then goes down to the next line and says this is an alarm event so I'm going to send it to this account as well. So you can send the information to up to 64 different IP receivers. The next video in the series is P-Link devices. For more information on programming please refer to the installation manual and find other resources on our website www.pottersignal.com.